Hello, my name is Velna Ronchevich, and today I will present my paper titled Memories of the Future, Literature as a Source of the Possible. The future is an unknowable fact. It is a temporality limited by knowledge, and as Adams et al. phrase it, it is only knowable in persistently changing ways. As a field of anthropological study, the main question pertains to methodology. How do we study a concept that is certain yet does not exist? Brian and Knight propose to study the relationship between future and action, including the act of imagining the future. For this purpose, we apply their concept of futural orientation as a way of thinking about the indeterminate and open-ended teleologies of everyday life. Brian and Knight also introduced the concept of temporal dynamism, a way of thinking that, starting from the future, contemplates the multi-temporality of the present and the past. Temporal dynamism also points to the capacity of objects and beings to bring possible futures into the present, similar to the dimension of anticipation that Adams et al. term abduction, taking back and forth from the future, present, and past. Literature is one such possible object, or rather, its texts have the potential to become such an object. This potential is mediated by the work of imagination, for apadurai and energy and an aid in the dynamic process of understanding the present and envisioning the future. Imagination is a part of the life story of individuals and groups. However, it is not an escape from daily life, but its integral dimension. The research we will present is part of a wider study under the name Remembering Literature in Everyday Life, an installation research project financed by the Croatian Science Foundation. The goal of the project is to comprehensively identify and interpret facts about memory of literature in everyday life among non-professional readers in Croatia by conducting semi-structured interviews. The interview begins by asking uh, the interviewee to select three to five books they read and then continues to question to questions relating to their memories of those works. One of the questions posed in the interview is, interview is, has reading ever made you think about the future, whether these or some other works? While some readers negate any future uh, orientations, uh, others express an orientation towards other temporalities, the present or the past. This paper focuses on those readers who answer positively to the question about literature as a mediator of imagination about the future, but we also take into consideration futural orientations expressed in other parts of the interview. We ask, what do the readers think about when they talk about spatiotemporal and other aspects of the future? Our paper, paper will thus show readers' first experiences of the future, but it will also outline a collective image uh, or orientation to future uh, itself. Uh, although there are many overlaps in topics and concerns about the future, we observe six dimensions of meaning that literature has in readers' lives, and we apply them as analytical categories. The first dimension uh, is distinguished by the potential of literature to orient the individuals, individual, reflections in which readers express personal development or growth through reading. As Tangiras finds, if connected to personal experience, reading can influence our personality and worldview. It can have the potential to be transformative. Readers' reflections on literature witness to its influence on, on their cognitive generalizations about the self, that is, their self-schemata. For example, reader 33 33 reflects on how books set the framework of his thinking about the future, stating, they set sort of like a window that I observe it through. They determine what I think is important. Referring to his youth, reader 514 states that literature has always made him think about the future. I think it shaped me as a person. I was convinced all the time that by reading I was enriching myself and that I was getting closer to what I wanted to be. We see an awareness of literature as a means of shaping or building the self. For example, reader 171, who feels that fiction formed a lot of her opinions and feelings and continues 
I think books have shaped me into the person that I am. Or reader 245 who states, absolutely, I think they have built me a lot, my outlook on life and everything. These readers regard their personal experience of reading as having had an impact on their frame of thought, values, and worldviews. Built through past experiences of reading, they refer to their now selves, those that are different from their past selves, but because they are stated as answers to a question about the future, there is a sense of a presumed stability of their st self-concept. It ties to what they think about their potential and their future, that is, their possible selves. Introducing the notion of story world possible selves, Martinez points to the uh, relevance of the self-concept for an understanding of narrative engagement when internal features are met to those of the mental representations of fictional characters. Story world possible selves can also be an inspiration for imagining possible futures, uh, as it was for reader 487, who, referring to Eva Meyer's bird cottage, states, this woman who left after a successful career in the middle of it, left to live in nature. It is an inspiration to me. I'm just waiting to leave like that myself. Closely connected to the dimension of transformation, the second dimension concerns reading as an opportunity to learn, understand social relations, broaden world views, provide life lessons, and other knowledge that can reorient the reader. As Hockemulder finds, Narratives often an opportunity to learn and influence self-concept. Consequently, literature has the potential to produce new understandings of oneself and affect real-life choices. Reader 518 states that literature always makes her think about the future. To inspire me with a series of new ideas, it enriches me for something new, so I'm smarter for future things. Also about the past. I have those aha moments. I understand an event from my life better because I explained it to myself through a story. Similarly, Reader56 likes to learn from books and characters. I learn and try to use it later in life. She asks, is that looking to the future? Literature has been a, a lifelong source of knowledge for Reader478 who comments, I've learned a lot through books. I mean, really enlightenment. That's what books are for, to enlighten and teach. In these instances, we observe what Hakim Mulder terms pre-ethical effects of narrative fiction, where stories affect readers' beliefs about causality. They're an example of what he states are the deeply rooted pre-ethical and moral effects of reading in the Western concept of literature. This educational view on literature can also be thought of as a reflection of what Peterson and all recognize institutional technologies of the 21st century nurture as the ideal citizen, a future-oriented, responsible individual who aims for the good life through lifelong learning. The third dimension reveals various political and sociocultural issues that concern readers. Statements that show us how attention to the future Future reveals insecurities experienced in the present, but also inspires ruminations of the past. Imagining the future in the present brings forth what Adams and all term telescoping of temporal possibilities, an effective process that arouses a sense of the future as uncertain and inevitable. For example, we see that literature can serve as a mediator for thinking about the current situation in Ukraine and consequently the topic of war in general. Referencing Tolstoy's War and Peace, reader 275 states that reading and thinking about the future goes together. He continues, you dream of a future without war, without the evil that accompanies it. Even if Tolstoy wonders what to do with so many weapons, if there was peace, what about so many weapons? It is the same today. If there is peace, the weapons will explode. Ukraine is a victim of weapons. A work by Svetlana Alexeyevich had an effect of a temporal push on Reader 104. She says, Unfortunately, the future from voices from Chernobyl caught up with us very quickly, at least the threat. She says that in her book club they realized that we are reading a current book. The moment that they said they occupied Chernobyl was a terrifying realization for me. It was easy to somehow project it into the future. 
As in the case of reflections on the self-concept, we see that, future, that the future is not imagined in one direction. Imagination of the future is abducted back and forth between the past, present, and future, a kind of temporal excursion inspired by the experience of reading. Furthermore, as the examples of the war in Ukraine show, imagination of the future is not stable, but tempor temporarily dynamic. That is, certain current events elicit other possible futures. For example, for example, Reader 92 states how her belief in the future was suddenly changed. Books were also an experience. What is happening today, these horrors, happened once before, and somehow I thought it would never happen again, but here it is again. Before reading those books, I believe that all those bad things, historical or, historical or fictional, are behind us. Somehow I saw the future smarter, cleaner, brighter. In regards to the relationship of literature and the future of society, reader 283 states, I think that some works, those that I would call literature of the highest standard, are the ones that make you think. Good literature does exactly that. It makes some kind of connection. What is our current setting of society, the system, of whatever? And where is it? where does it lead? Is that where we want to go? The consideration of sociocultural change is also observed on the topic of women's rights. Issues that for Reader 52 were brought up after reading the autobiography of actress Mira Furlan. Mira may have changed me quite a bit. That is, she determined my thoughts about the world we live in today. Politics in Croatia and the attitude towards women, how much it is changing or not changing. We can see that by turning towards different temporalities, literature can serve as a mediator of multi-temporal thinking, including personal and social relationships towards sociocultural change. The fourth dimension we distinguish are uh, examples of literature as an explicit source for imagining the future whether that concerns certain texts or literature in general. Although she states that uh, she associates the fant fantasy genre with the past, a scene from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings that reader 98 chose to describe, to describe shows how literature can unexpectedly orient the reader towards the future. Frodo and Gandalf meet at the beginning, and Gandalf tells him that it is not up to us to change the past, but all we can do is, to, is decide what to do with the time we are given. A more personal example is given by reader 124, who states that reading in general encourages her to think, even more so now that she gave birth. Since I gave birth, I read a lot of poetry, women, some moment of mine to find myself somewhere there. Brian and Knight highlight the importance of uh, orientations towards different ends in our daily lives. We find this teleological as aspect, including a transformative dimension in the observation by reader 128 on the invisible life by Adi LaRue by Victoria Elizabeth Schwab. She says that whole thought of what it's like to be forgotten and that people want to leave a mark to be remembered. I started working more on opening up and getting involved in more groups so that something would be left behind. The opposite is true for reader 201, who, for whom an effort to disregard the future was an end, end in itself. She states that after reading Practicing the Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, she understood that there is no future at all, that I shouldn't pay so much attention to the future because I'm not, I'm not in the future. It is impossible to influence it, and it is impossible to feel in the future. As cultural anthropologist Arjun Apadurai observes, the future is not technical or neutral, but shot through with affect and sensation. All the reader's experiences and memories are shaped by affect. It shapes our perceptions of the future, while the imagined and anticipated future sh shapes our affective states. The fifth dimension shows different affects and emotions that are involved in thinking about the future. According to Grossberg, uh, affect is what gives color, tone, or texture to our experiences, while Masumi understands it as a nonlinear un intensity that is realized through unconscious reactions. Stating that she always thinks about the future when reading, this intensity experienced is expressed by reader 439, 
who says, Sometimes it is so intense that I have to stop reading as ideas and feelings comes to me, come to me. For reader 62, the future is necessarily affective. I think about the past, but I feel the future. Emotions can uh, also be an interest by, uh, by itself, as they are for reader 186, who states, I like to study love and those, uh, and, and those feelings through the books I read and how much the writers were motivated by those most sublime feelings. As for fear, Ahmed notes that uh, its intensity is felt in the present, but the thing we fear is in the future. It is the passing by of the object that projects us from the present into the future. And in the case of reading, that what passes by is sparked by the text. In such a way, Kundera's The Unbearable Lightness of Being showed reader 26 uh, the life that awaits her, what she was afraid of, and brought up a feeling she describes as fear of life. For this reader, the text brought up something concerning that passed by and projected her into the future she fears. While fear is caused by an approach of an object, for Ahmed, anxiety concerns uh, the appro approach to an object, such as reader 218, uh, who states that reading the graphic novel Asterius Polyp by David Mazzucchelli put up an emotion he describes as semi-anxiety, thinking about your own mortality. However, if we can approach an object, we can also turn against it, which is what reader 98 did when feeling uh, fear of the unknown and anxiety while reading Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, stating that she had to speed up some parts because of it. The sixth, but not definite, is a group of responses that specifically refer to old age and death, statements that revealed a s reveal a certain realism and matter-of-factness. For example, referring to Baba Yaga laid an egg by Dubravka Ugrešić, reader 437 says, I'm 64 years old. I'm thinking about what it'll be like. God willing, I'll live to be 70, 80, 90. I'm thinking about that age, definitely. While also stating a fear of old age, for 65-year-old reader 48, Olive Kettridge by Elizabeth Strout was very impressive. It talks about people my age who are waiting for death and where they are being convinced that this world is still beautiful and that it's, it's, it is a shame to leave it. We also observe a sort of turning away from the future and its effects, such as reader 138 who affirms that of course she thinks about the future but adds that she doubts anything can change her at age 70. She says, I mean, what am I going to think about? To be honest with you, I run away from it. And finally, we end with reflections from 67-year-old reader 157, who states that she reads science fiction because it, it is a future that I won't experience, unfortunately, because I'm partly already in the universe. Thank you.